Malaysia Smart Tunnel. How is a smart tunnel going to contribute to better flowing traffic in Malaysia? The Malaysia Smart Tunnel has the answer for you. Let's find out what the tunnel is used for and what makes the tunnel so unique. And how did they build the tunnel? Stay tuned for the video where we'll explain all your questions. And also don't forget to subscribe to the Arch Hub channel. So without any further ado, let's get into it. What is the tunnel used for? In the first mode, when there is no storm and normal conditions are present, the system will not redirect any flood water and remain in its regular state. When the second mode is activated, flood water is redirected into the bypass tunnel that is located underneath the tunnel that houses the highway. At this point, the highway segment can still accommodate vehicles in both directions. When the third mode is activated, the highway will be off limits to all vehicles. When making sure that all vehicles have left the highway, automated watertight gates will be released to allow floodwaters to pass through. This will be done after it has been verified that all vehicles have left the highway. Within 48 hours of the highway's closure, when the flooding has subsided, the tunnel will be checked for damage and cleaned with pressure washing before the highway is restored to traffic. What makes this tunnel so smart and unique? Stormwater Management and Road Tunnel, or SMART, is a project started by the federal government to stop flooding in the city center of Kuala Lumpur. The project is run by the Department of Irrigation and Drainage Malaysia and the Malaysian Highway Authority. MMC Corp Berhad and Gamuda Berhad have an agreement to work together on the project. Studies have shown that the stretch of the Sungai Klang between where the SG Klang and SG Ampong rivers meet and where the Gombak and Klang rivers meet are prone to flooding. The the fact that the river is also limited by the low Jalantun Perak Bridge near the Maji Jamak has caused flooding in the areas around it. With a holding pond, bypass tunnel, and a storage reservoir, the smart system will be able to keep a lot of flood water from getting into this important area. This will lower the level of flood water at the Jalantun Perak Bridge, which will stop water from spilling over. The project proponent, MMC Corp Berhad Gamuda Berhad Joint Venture, started the stormwater management and road tunnel project to help prevent flooding in Kuala Lumpur, which is the financial, business, and commercial center of Malaysia. But when SMART was being planned, its backers came up with the idea of using it for two different things. The motorway tunnel was added to the system to ease traffic at the main southern gateway to the city center. The highway will help with traffic. The motorway tunnel will give drivers from the Southern Gateway, which includes the KL Serimbian Highway, the Federal Highway, the Berisha, and the East-West Link, an alternative way to get into and out of the city center. This will make the Southern Gateway, which leads to the city center, less crowded with cars. The time needed to travel will be cut down by a lot. For example, it should only take four minutes to get from the Jalan Istana Interchange to Kampung Perdan, while it takes 10 to 15 minutes on the roads that are already there. Are they able to build it and how? Garsic limestone with a high water table provides the foundation for Kuala Lumpur. It was decided that using tunnel boring equipment would be the most efficient and minimally disruptive way to cut through this type of terrain. Two slurry shield TBMs, each measuring 13.2 meters in diameter, were ultimately selected after extensive investigation. They have one of the widest diameters in the entire world. There were four primary components of the slurry shield TBM. For dirt removal, rotary head cutters with tungsten pick bits are used, whereas disc cutters are employed for rock removal. Bulkhead, where a bentonite slurry barrier is generated under pressure to give support for the tunnel's construction. The machine was propelled ahead, and the tunnel was held in place by hydraulic rams. In the past, precast concrete wall lighting was installed by tunnel lining erectors. Not only did the TBM have the aforementioned features, but it also had two bogies on rails that housed the electrical, slurry pumping, ventilation, and cable pipe systems. Both slurry shield vehicles left the Jalan Shan Shao Lin Field, also known as JKR, region. Region. One machine tunneled northward, passing beneath Jalan Tun Razak and Jalan de Sapandan until emerging in Ampong Lake just beyond the Glen Eagles Hotel. The other TBM started its boring to the south and ended at the lake in Taman Desa, passing beneath the Jalan Chan Saolin and the KL Serimbian Highway and the Bessie Airstrip. Construction on the tunnel began in 2004 and was formally finished in August 2006. A highway control center, police staff, emergency phone lines, and variable message signboards are all present in the tunnel at all times. Which people and vehicles can use the tunnel? 
Regarding the alleviation of traffic, the Smart Tunnel has gained widespread acceptance as one of the favorite solutions among road users for their commute into the central business district of Kuala Lumpur from the southern entrance and vice versa. The average trip time on the federal road is 20 minutes, but when you take the Smart Tunnel, it only takes 8 minutes. This is the primary reason why the travel time is so much shorter when taking the Smart Tunnel. Aside from these advantages, the Smart Tunnel Project also has been successful in producing more professionals in the field of tunneling. From the project alone, it has trained up to 200 local engineers who are now equipped to tackle any tunneling issues located wherever in the world. Motorcycles are not permitted to travel inside Smart Tunnels at any time. The tunnel's interior lanes are much too small to accommodate both automobiles and motorbikes at the same time. Aside from that, let's just let the automobiles use the tunnels to reduce the amount of traffic on the top roads. It's also risky for bikers to utilize it illegally. Therefore, they should stick to standard roadways. Reactions and Criticism the best thing about the Smart Tunnel in Malaysia is that it makes the city more stable. SDG 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities, includes smart urban infrastructures. This is a feature that's meant to be expanded to fight climate change. Changes in the climate have made it so that there are more and stronger, bigger storms in Malaysia. A road system that works as both a road and a storm tank gives you a lot of options. Part of the intelligence of cities of the future won't come from technology, but from making it easier to use infrastructure we already have in different ways. This is the case with so-called mixed-use buildings. The UN Habitat Scroll of Honor Award was given to the Smart Tunnel in 2011, but it's not without controversy. Part of the problem it solves, redirecting stormwater, wouldn't have been necessary if Kuala Lumpur had used an urban planning model to stop water channels decades ago. The second thing that people don't like is that the two rivers have been turned into drainage channels. Ecologists say that a river is not a pipe, but an ecosystem. The constant resulting of stormwater has had a big effect on the water's biodiversity and the area as a whole. Last but not least, the shorter travel times have caused more vehicles to use the tunnel. Soon after it opened, it stopped reducing traffic jams because there is now more traffic and a new lewis mogridge equilibrium has been reached. In other ways, people are falling into a trap. Every one kilometer in the tunnel, there's a shaft for ventilation or getting out. These will keep the air in the motorway section of the tunnel clean by constantly replacing it. The ventilation systems are made up of a series of shafts that each have an exhaust and a fresh air injector to protect them from flooding. This means that the fans can be placed outside of the tunnel. This creates a longitudinal flow between shafts to keep the air in the tunnel fresh and lets exhaust fumes and smoke escape in case of a fire. And that's it for today's video, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video. If you did, please click on the like button and make sure you share it with all your friends and family. Have you ever seen this tunnel yourself? Please let us know in the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you'll see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected just for you. And we'll catch up with you in our next video. Thanks for watching once again and have the best rest of your day. We'll do it again soon.